you know when you have to do a project at school in one month and you say, I'm gonna do one hour every weekday and that'll give me 23 hours to do my work. And you play video games after school with your friends for like the first three weeks and then your teacher reminds you on Monday that your project is due on Friday and that you have six hours of work every day to get your work done. And your mom gets mad at you and you're so cranky and tired that you fight with your brother and your best friend. No, me either. But that's kind of where we are with the latest IPCC report. Today I'm reviewing the summary for policymakers of the synthesis report of the IPCC 6th assessment report, which just means the review of the review of the last six IPCC reviews. It was released today and endorsed by 195 countries. I'm not sure why they didn't just call it, why the heck aren't you listening to us? Because if you don't start now, everything's gonna burn report. And the thing is here in Canada, things feel kinda okay still. Sure, we have no snow all of January and can't ski and daffodils come up in February. And then we get a weird snow dump in March. And yeah, town burnt to the ground in BC last summer because temperatures hit 54 Celsius. But that was just a freak thing, right? But if we actually listen to the news, there is an increase in weather-related disasters around the world. More than 5 million people die each year globally because of excessive hot or cold conditions, and those heat-related deaths are on the rise. Hurricane Ian in the US and Cuba cost more than 100 billion in damages. The source of the Thames dried up and drought in Europe cost more than 20 billion one third of Pakistan was underwater and 10 million children are still at risk from vast areas still flooded. Drought in the Horn of Africa has impacted 36 million people. We were told five years ago by the IPCC that we had 12 years to limit climate change. And now we only have seven years left. This year alone has seen the approval of cedar liquefied natural gas in Canada, which will release 40,000 tons of methane per year. Willow, the Alaskan drilling project that will generate up to 278 million metric tons of CO2e over its 30 year lifetime. The UK has 40 coal, oil and gas projects seeking approval by 2025. China will add approximately 45 gigawatts of coal fire generation capacity in 2023. The International Energy Agency has said that no new fossil fuel projects are compatible with limiting global warming to 1.5 celsius not a new one in every country every year the crazy thing is we can all do this the cost of all types of renewable energy are dropping like mad and all we need to do is get to work and believe we can do it and kick those fossil fuels executive to the curb Here's what the report says, that people who have already warmed the planet by 1.1 Celsius over the last 100 years, this warming has harmed and will continue to harm our planet with those who have contributed the least suffering the worst. Some people are just starting to try, but it's not enough. We are seeing increased maladaptation and I didn't even understand what this means. But it's when we do something to fix things and it actually makes it worse. An example would be building a seawall for sea level rise and then it fails and then it floods even more area when a better alternative would be to move back and create wildlife habitat and plants, mangroves or coral forms or seagrass. It is very unlikely that we'll keep below 1.5 celsius because our co2 levels are still rising and we are not doing enough right now we are on a path to blow right past two celsius they stress that every increment it rises will make things worse so we don't get to give up we need everyone to stand up and make a difference some of the changes we are going to see are now unavoidable and irreversible like ice melting and biodiversity loss but we can still do so much to limit the bad if we start reducing greenhouse gas emissions now the less we do today the harder it will be tomorrow
Limiting global warming requires net zero CO2 emissions, and the next decade will be the most critical time in human history to keep us on a livable planet. Everything they modeled keeping us to 1.5 Celsius means we need to cut these emissions in this decade by 43%, not in 2050. All models have global emissions peaking before 2025. That's only two years away. If we can keep it to 1.5, we can drop it down again later with negative emissions. If we don't, disaster will increase and feedback loops will keep making everything worse. The words rapidly closing window of opportunity to secure a livable future for us means right now we are getting an F on that project unless we change our ways. What we do in the next seven years will impact us for thousands of years. It will be cheaper in every respect to make changes now then to fix things later. But if we do, it will make things better in every way. Government, finance, and business all have to start to work together now. This will be the last report for the next five years. Let's make this one the one we finally listen to. My sister was saying she felt like there was nothing she could do to make things better, but I just told her that's listening to the playbook of the fossil fuel companies. We did not get to stop because we feel hopeless. To be honest, you adults out there suck a bit for letting us get into this situation. Let's get to work. No more lies, no more excuses. We kids are counting on you to put things right for your kids.